Welcome, welcome. You are watching the Suitable Help Her podcast, where we help wives rediscover their purpose and passion in marriage, business, and life. And I am so excited about my phenomenal guest this morning. You are in for what I hope to be a treat, a treat of transparency. I'm going to introduce you to my guest. Her name is Tracy Bryant, and she is known as the sacred CEO. And I'm going to give her the floor just to give her a chance to introduce herself thoroughly because I'm really interested. What does it mean to be a secret C sacred CEO? Miss Tracy. Hi. Hi. Danny. How, How are so you? Good sis? to see you. Again, you too. Sis. Good to see you. Yes. <laughs> We're so yes. far away. That was kind of a stretch. Come on, let's, let's, let's do it right. Okay, let's try that again. Get good All right. Touchy. We got it. <laughs> right, right. Tell me about it. Like you said sacred CEO and you're known for activating people's purpose and their sacredness. So how did that come about? Well, I've always had a genuine gift in motivating and inspiring people um, through, through the word, through my word, which is connected to God's word. Mm. And, um, and I'm not just talking about like a biblical perspective. I'm saying just the power of the word. And um, I come from a line in a workspace of healing. So I worked in the trauma-informed space for over 20 years. I am the founder and director of Love My Womb Academy, which is the largest feminine health and wellness academy in the nation. We have a certified over uh, 3,300 women from all over the country who have come use their passports to actually come to our academy and learn feminine health and wellness. And in that, I would allow the women to come and to release, to heal, reset, dump, and then be able to reset to go back out and be activated into their purpose. Mm -hmm. So I've always had that gift with women and being in that space and bringing community together. And so I find that to be a very sacred gift mm. to be able to do that. Absolutely. And I honor it as that. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. See, yeah. now, so now we're going to warm it up a little bit and people are going to start to understand why, why, why are we talking to Miss Tracy? Oh, you're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> um, and I don't think it was a coincidence how we met, right? So we were at a, a summit. Not at and all. And I was looking for my husband who was roaming here and there and everywhere. <laughs> and I said, let me just find a seat. And I just looked and there was just, there was plenty of seats actually in the yeah. back, but there she was. And I just sat down right next to her. I don't even know how we ended up talking, but at some point I said to you, what do you talk about? Mm -hmm. And I understood that you actually have a, a business, a ministry. Is it a ministry? Is it a business? It, you, I would call my business a ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where you help Most people definitely. deal with life after divorce. Yes. So mm -hmm. I thought that's interesting because we deal with couples who are dealing with infidelity and all kinds of other marital issues, yes. right? Yes. And so today's show, y'all, is really about divorce. What are the expectations? What is the reality versus the expectations that we we expect when we think, I'm going to get out of this mess, I'm going to move on? You know, we have, we look at life through rose-colored goggles, I think, a lot of times, and we never really count the cost when we're in the midst of something, right? Yeah. Um, and then I think also Hollywood does a great job of, you know, um, making things seem so elaborate from the wedding, getting married in the first mm -hmm. place. We're in the white dress. We're excited about that all the way to the divorce. Free dumb girl. You don't have to deal with none of this anymore. But then there's the truth somewhere mm -hmm. in between, isn't there? Yes, ma'am. So I was very <laughs> excited to meet her, somebody who is actually helping people deal with life after divorce. I thought maybe it would be a good idea for us to deal with this topic from the top of the show because we're really still building a foundation about what it looks like to be a wife and the things that we think about and what we go through. And I know some of y'all have thought of divorce. Some of us have actually thought of it. Okay. So we're going to get into it. So, you know, back in 2022, you had a big transition in your life, right? Where you let go of a multi million dollar company. You released your home, you released your marriage. What transition took place in your life at that time that made you say to yourself, enough is enough. I've had it. Well, I know in doing that in 2020, it was a, uh, an act of rebellion, especially in the eyes of the community. It's an act of a rebellion for a wife and a woman 
who has the marriage that is like, and we had like a very, what, what would you call it? Public marriage. Like we both were in the healing space. So um, we were transparent most of the time, you know, a lot of times and um, public about our relationship and our marriage. And, you know, with that, we had the home, you know, you know, close to 5,000 square feet. You know, we had the businesses, we had the money, we had the social circles, you know, we had what most of us considered to be that epitome of life right? Marriage, home, business, money, traveling, enjoying. And in that, what I found for me was in that act of rebellion, I needed, it was an also synonymous with an act of self-love. Mm. So in that rebellion was the self-love. And, um, one of the main reasons that I released my marriage, first I want to say as women, we're taught that marriage is the epitome of a woman's life, marriage and motherhood, right? And so with that programming, it's very difficult to even phantom the releasing of your marriage, whether it's toxic, whether it's dysfunctional, whether it's just not coming together. It's like it's something you want to stick and stay and do because other than that, it's considered a failure. Mm, mm -hmm. Right? And, and it's so much shame and guilt connected to that, especially as women when we've been raised from little girls to be married take care of the husband and the home and the children and be mothers. But nowhere in there, they fitted, fit in the program to take care of ourselves. Mm, girl, you going there. We're constantly serving and giving and sharing. And, and it's like, what, what about me? Because as I am sharing and pouring from my cup, now I need to be refilled and it's no one else's responsibility to refill that cup. No. Because I gave up my portion. So in giving up my portion, I have to be the one to figure out how do I refill this. Mm. And so when I go to my husband and say, honey, I need you to help refill my cup. Uh huh. And now my husband doesn't have producing seed mm. to refill my cup. Mm -hmm. I became very disappointed Okay. because as men, they have the seed mm -hmm. and as women, we take that seed, whatever that is. I'm not just talking about a fertility seed, but I am talking about fertility outside of physical birth. You know, they have that seed. And as women, we nurture that seed. We, we maintain that seed. We cover that seed as the husband covers us. Mm -hmm. But when we got to a space that I was nurturing and I was giving and I was sharing and I was taking care of everyone else, including what he was producing. And then when me as his wife came to my helper, the one I should come to first and foremost, God, then him. Right. And he didn't have that producing seed for me. It made me really relook and, and, and rethink about where are we in this mm, right now, mm, right? Mm, yeah. So when you are married, you are not just connected to your husband, but you're married to everything else that comes with that Whatever marriage. Whatever he's connected to. Whatever he's connected to. So we were connected to the home. We were connected to the business. We were connected to all these things that included my identity, Right? Your identity. My identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my identity, our identity is based on this union mm -hmm. now. You know, you don't have a single identity anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I no longer, that was no longer feeding me or maintaining my mental and emotional health. So you said some bomb dropping things yeah. just now, okay? The first thing that stands out to me is the rebellion that started to spin out of control because 
as the helper and as the wife and you're doing all the things you're sharing your life you've melded your identity with this person right and you were pouring from an empty cup at some point yes. when you turned to him and said i need you to help fill my cup yes. he was incapable of doing that for you yes. As a woman, do you think because we are so multi-talented, multifunctional, that it is the thing that causes many women to disconnect when they find that their spouse isn't adequate to support them in the way that they've been supporting? They've been the octopus in their mm -hmm. life, right? Yes. And designed to be that way. God designed us to be mm -hmm. this way, did he not? Yes. But then when we turn to our husbands and we say, I need help, and they just have the two arms, yeah. does this make women think, I don't, I don't have to take this. I don't need this. I, my man, my, my guy got two jobs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I ain't got to take this. Do you think that that's what's happening? Well, are you talking about within the culture right now of what's happening between our relationship space and yeah, because, married relationship space? Because if you space? think about it, there's a lot of women that are strengthening up. Mm-hmm. And yes. saying, I don't have to take this anymore. Yes. I could do better by myself. I'm pulling you along. You don't have the capacity to support me in the way that I'm supporting you. So now I've got double, triple, quadruple work and there's no reciprocation. So do you think that is the reason why women are saying, I'm ready for divorce. I'm ready to throw in the towel. Yes, but then I have to say something else to that. I think that's part of the reason. But for one, our roles are different as well. And we have to understand that men, let's be clear, they don't multitask. They don't. They're not designed to. They're God not didn't designed do that. to, right. Uh -huh. They're not just so I never look for him to have the octopus arms. Mm -hmm. What were you looking for? Can we get to that? I was looking for real, let's come up with a plan on how you can help me so that I can reset and rest. You said it earlier. You were looking for the seed. Yes, I was looking for the seed. Because I'm the womb. I, right. Give me something. Give me the seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's sit down as the union, as, as the couple, as the, as the one. Okay. Let's sit down and discuss how you, we can work together so that we can create a plan for you to help me because now your wife needs rest. Your wife needs to reset. That's what I need from you right now. Let's discuss that. Mm -hmm. So I was never looking for him to have octopus arms. I was looking for us to really find a plan of action. Mm -hmm. And when there was no plan of action in there wasn't even a conversation and I keep bringing it up and I was basically being told like I was nagging, you know, that whole nag piece. And I'm saying, look, I'm breaking down over here. Uh, your wife, I, I, I feel like I'm dying over here. I need resuscitation. I need you. This is what I need from you as my husband. I've given, I've given, I've shared, I've shared. You're doing well. You're successful. Our businesses are doing well, it's successful, but there was always a complaint about, honey, you need rest. You need rest, babe, you need to back up some. You need to, you need to put some of those things down. Okay, I agree with you. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. How do you compliment me and compliment us in the union so that your wife can do that? How can you put something in place of what I'm doing now so that I can release that and let that go so that I can rest and restore. Mm. Let's, you know, I, and this is the, this is the actual conversation I'm saying, like, what, what do you have to compensate? Okay. Because this is what we're paying out right now. So if I stop that, I'm, I'm releasing $10,000 of what's coming into this household. Okay. That $10,000 is, is allocated over here, over here and over here. So, babe, talk what's to me. Plan? Mm -hmm. What's the plan? What can we do? What can I help you do to to let's compensate for that so that I can relieve that and I can rest and restore? Because, see, at that time, I was running three businesses. I was running my my spa, which had at one point 12 employees. Then I was running my school, which was out of the spa. 
right? The Academy. And then we have a product line that we had a whole room dedicated to, to produce the product and ship it out. So I'm running three businesses. So when I get up each morning and go to my spa, I'm actually running three businesses. Right. Then I'm coming home and my husband is expecting me to help him in his business, which is okay. And I was okay with that because I I desired to help him build as the wife. I desired to help him build. And when I didn't feel like there was consideration there, okay, you know, I've been, I'm telling you, I'm tired. I'm telling you, I'm beat. I had to do this X, Y, and Z. And you still come and say, okay, well, I need X, Y, and Z. And I need you to show up for me like you show up for yours. And it's like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, what are we eating? Cook something. <laughs> like, uh, what are we? You know, I just came back. What are we? Yeah. You know, yeah, that's a good question. What we eating? What, what we eating, babe? You know what I'm saying? I'm hungry yeah. too. Right. You know, and it was yeah. just, it, it became, it just became, you know, where things were just not considered as far mm. as refilling my cup. And that's exactly what yes. I'm speaking of right there. Yes. So, yes, to the degree of women are like, you know, I don't have to do this. I, I, I can I could do I see I'm doing this by myself in the marriage. I can definitely do this by myself outside of the marriage. And maybe really it's actually I can't do this anymore. Right? It's it's, yeah. it's beyond I could do better by myself. I'm doing it's better with you. That, I'm doing good with you, right, but right. but I'm I'm spinning all the wheels. I'm the widget, I'm the everything. I'm spinning all the I'm wheels. I'm the hub and the spoke. I'm the spinning all the wheels. Right. Yeah. And so we so I can't take it anymore because I need to preserve I need to save myself. I, I need say to this save a lot. Myself. You know, Humpty Dumpty, he fell off the wall and he was waiting for somebody to put him back together and the whole thing goes. He's nobody Nobody's coming to put you back together, sis. Nobody. Like, if you don't get up off that floor, he's not coming to put you back together because we're so strong sometimes. We're so resilient sometimes that they think that we could just run like the Energizer yeah. battery and we'll never run out of energy. But inside, we're yeah. running out of energy. We're inside, out. the thoughts start coming. We're mm -hmm. finding a way of escape and it begins up here. Mm -hmm. So Tracy, you, you did let go of your marriage. You released it all, right? Yeah. And we're talking about divorce and the expectations versus the reality, right? Yes. And so we think, it's going to be the answer to it all. But then we encounter other Ooh. difficulties, don't we? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't want. We about to get into cause we, it. Because, you know, what we were talking about now, a lot of women are probably like, yeah, I might need to get my divorce paid. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. with you, sis. But hold on. Pump the brakes. Pump, 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 pump the brakes. <laughs> because then there's the reality of the emotional toll, the financial toll, the family toll. There's a lot that goes into divorce that oftentimes we don't consider before we make that choice. No, so talk to us a little bit about the emotional impact and some of what it, the reality that you experience after making that decision. Well, I'll, first off, I want to say much of it is emotionally charged. Much of it is emotionally charged. So you have to really sort through your emotions to find out if you are acting from a place of just simply emotion and not logic. That's the most important thing, you know, before you decide to say, okay, this is what I choose. I choose to leave the marriage. Um, so I did factor in marriage counseling before I made that decision. I exhausted every effort to make it work because I did not want to move in haste, emotional haste. Okay. And so when we got to marriage counseling and the marriage counselor suggested that he do some things in order to secure our marriage. And, um, those things, those, those things weren't met. They weren't even looked at. And it was even suggested, I don't even want to do this marriage counseling piece anymore. There was nothing else left for me to do, but to exit. Because now we're not even working on anything. We're not working together. So I would definitely suggest always exhaust every Absolutely. option before you decide because um, it is not what we think. We think, okay, we're about to leave this and we're just going to go move on and I'm just going to bounce forward and I'm just going to blow up. No, I do not suggest anyone do what I did. First off. I don't suggest you do that without 
like being logical, speaking to, you know, therapy, therapists, uh, marriage counselors and things like that mm -hmm. first, like really do that because we just don't want to uh, move in emotional haste. Um, but the reality is now your identity has shifted. Mm. So there's Talk a big it. identity shift that takes place where you don't know who you are and what you're supposed to be doing because your identity was just attached to your union to your husband, mm. to your marriage, mm -hmm. to what, to your family, the two became one, the two became they? one to your family. Mm -hmm. You're not just the moving on and releasing your marriage. You're releasing your in-laws. You're releasing the your community, your nephews, your family, you, all those years <sighs> of what you knew you're releasing all of that. Oh, you know what, Tracy, real quick, just something Hassan and I talk about is the memories. That is the key. The memories, the moments that we share together that we can laugh about that nobody even knows what we're talking about. You are literally breaking yourself into two pieces. Yeah. And now you have to heal from there because everything in the past is lost. Yes. Oof. Yes. And I wouldn't even say as much loss as no longer being lived in. Mm hmm. OK, because mm -hmm. those memories, sometimes you can go back to those after you've done some healing. Sure. You can go back to those memories and find strength. Sure. Sure. You know, but in that moment of releasing your marriage, those memories, you can't go on those. No. You you are becoming this new person. Um, my prayer life definitely increased. Okay, first it was margaritas, then it was prayer. <laughs> <laughs> we do I not endorse this <laughs> message. <laughs> well, I had to, I had to self-medicate. I did right, in the beginning. Right. I'm going to just keep it 100. Oh, absolutely. I had to do some self-medicating because I was truly hurting. Mm -hmm. It was like, who am I now? Who am I? What do I do? I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the wherewithal. I didn't have the answers. I didn't have direction. I didn't have a blueprint. I had a mind of what to do as far as leaving. But once I left, I don't care how much you plan. And based on your age, you oh, know, this wow. is something I could do in 25. Uh -huh. I was 56. Woo. So my energy level has shifted, okay. honey. And then I was going through perimenopause. Mm. So I had all these factors going on with me when I decided to leave. And I was really in a very, very dark place. I had no blueprint. All I could do is think about some of the women, the strong women that had left their marriage and became better for it. That that became stronger, that became that became wiser. You know, I had that to look forward to. And like I said, once I um, released the margaritas and went strongly into my prayer life, that's the only thing that really saved me. Mm -hmm. You you said that you released in 2022. How long were you considering this? Because I think a lot of times we we don't we don't consider the cost or or we just quick make a decision and we do it. Now we have to deal with the ramifications of it. So how did you know that, OK, this is long enough. It's time. That's number one. Right. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight of that, do you think sometimes women pull the trigger too soon just to escape their pain? Yes, I do. I do think that many times we can pull the trigger too soon. It is salvageable. It is workable. And, um, you know, I think out of frustration, many times we'll just go ahead and, and, and cut the ties and not uh, give it a chance. Because I, I find that when what's happening is more and more people are not coming into marriage a lot of times to stick and stay they always have like an escape hatch mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. you know it's like well if he don't do right or she don't do right i'm gone i already know what i'm gonna do like i gave it all i i didn't have an escape hatch i didn't have an escape plan i didn't have any of that when i when i came in as a wife to that man who i still love and that was the hardest thing to do to leave someone i was in love with like usually when you leave and you, you're not in, you know, the love is gone. You know, it's a, okay, it died out. The passion's gone, all this kind of thing. No, I was still very much deeply in love with my husband. And I was playing tug of war with myself and him. Do I stay because of the love or do I rebel and do a self-love currency piece?
you mm, know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's what you mean by rebel. So your rebelliousness was, I am the suitable help here, helper here. Yes. But I'm rebelling to save myself and take care of myself. Yes. That's the rebellion you're I talking about? I feel like if I would have stayed, I would have died. Wow. I, I really felt like if I would have stayed, I would lay in that bed and felt like if you don't get out of this, you're going to die. You're going to die. Something? And here you are racing ahead of your beautiful lifestyle, your million dollar business, your beautiful home, and everything probably looks so amazing to everybody looking in, but you are dying and you couldn't find any other escape. You said you went to the marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Nothing was changing. No. Bills and pressure still heavy on you about to take you out. Yes. Was he not in agreement of letting go of some of this stuff as, as you've done you know when you let go of everything you said i got peace now was he not in agreement to let go of some of when those I things when i first let go i didn't have peace okay talk about <laughs> it when i first let go i had dysfunction because like i said i didn't know how to navigate now you know i had been in this relationship almost 10 years and we was married for like close to seven OK, um, the year before we had just did a big old love reunion piece with all the family and friends and something about that moment. It was something about that love reunion that we did with family and friends, that ceremony. After that, it was like it was a big shift in our relationship. I don't know if there was a comfort level that came from him or um I don't know, but there was definitely a big shift and I felt it like immediately. And um, yeah, so yeah. So let me, I, I like the fact that you, you're you so um, knowledgeable about this because you've lived it and you support other women who have gone through it. Mm -hmm. A question that's coming to mind because you don't sound like a divorce advocate. You sound like a self-advocate, right? Yes. And being able to recognize when I'm about to die, we got somebody, something's got to change. Do you ever worry that you could be advocating divorce to successful, strong women? Because here's the thing that I know, we know, Tracy, is that women are out here crushing it, kicking butt, and killing it. Yeah. And oftentimes, especially in our community, um, the husbands aren't, at that same level. Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of pulling them along. There is a lot of them taking care of all the things. Do you think that your message could advocate for divorce? Well, let me first say, I know I'm not an advocate for divorce. I am an advocate for a healthy marriage. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. But I'm also a very strong advocate for healthy self-care mm -hmm. and self-love and ha getting your needs met, mm -hmm. men and women alike. Yes. Okay. And um, when I asked my husband to help save me because I'm dying over here and I wasn't thrown a life raft, I knew immediately I was responsible when I prayed out and hollered out to God. I knew I was responsible to save for saving myself. And that's, and that's all it was to it because I left in love, but I had to save myself. I had to get my own water. I, I, I had to, there was no other way else. Everything was going to be destroyed anyway. Everything was going to end up destroyed. So in saving myself, I know it looked like, you know, I, I looked crazy first off. I didn't have a whole lot of people to talk to about it, you know, because nobody understood. Um, and then I found myself in a space of such pain that a lot of times I was talking to the wrong people. I want to I wanna share Don't that. Do that. I want to share mm. that. I was talking to women who actually envied mm. my you're, marriage. You're, oh, oh, oh. Yes. So they're, they're like, you crazy because you just walked away from but all of this. But a lot of, of them wouldn't say it. Mm. See, that's the thing. This is what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my pain and I'm sharing my pain because I'm thinking I'm sitting with my sister. You mm -hmm. know, I'm sitting with my sister. Mm -hmm. Girl, we, we, you know, I, hey, help yeah. me walk through this. You know, help, help, just be talk therapy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Let me, let me share some things with you. And the whole time as I sit back now and I have more discernment, 
right? I see that I was speaking to um, some women that were actually envious of what I had. They, they wanted the marriage. They wanted the home. They wanted the business. They wanted the traveling. They wanted what all of that represented. They wanted that. And here I am leaving it. So there was not going to be an intimate common thread there for my healing. So I, I, I had to really check myself with that part as well, because a lot of times we can be in so much pain that we're sharing and we're sharing with the wrong ear, mm -hmm. sharing with people, people with the yeah. don't have the best intentions for you. Yeah. you know? And when you learn that you you're quick to isolate, right? You have to get yeah. by yourself. And, and actually, sometimes it's the most healing place you could be as alone, even though it's terrifying and scary mm -hmm. in the midst of it. Oh, it was dark. But then you find yourself. That's yeah. when you find That's yourself. where I found myself yeah. in the darkness. And all I kept telling myself is, although you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm. fear no, no evil. evil. Right. That's I just had to keep repeating that mm -hmm. and repeating that and repeating that over and over and over. And, you know, I had to sit with God and ask, well, you know, is this what you consider a sin? Like, because we have so much guilt connected to leaving the husband. And